Mr. Ambassador, thank you so much for this opportunity. Delighted to do it. To start this interview by hearing your goals uh, here in Athens. Well, I mean, first of all, the most important American goal in Greece right now is to see the country emerge successfully from this terrible seven-year economic crisis. I'm hopeful that the process of recovery is now beginning. You see that in terms of the macroeconomic numbers. Uh, you see that in terms of the decline uh, in unemployment. But there's a huge amount of work to do. And the United States is interested in Greece's success in this effort because you are a NATO ally, because this is a, this is a country that's strategically located. So that is bar none, the top U.S. goal. I've also put a lot of energy into our defense, security, counterterrorism relationship. Greece is living in a rough neighborhood. We're NATO allies. We're committed to come to each other's defense. And we see real opportunities in terms of growing the cooperation between our defense institutions, our security authorities. And then, of course, growing the people-to-people -people relationship, which is the glue that binds our strongest bilateral partnerships. We have the great advantage, you've got this strong Greek-American diaspora. So those are the three pillars of the relationship that I like to talk about. And the good news right now is that those pillars are as strong as they've been in a very long time. With the crisis, uh, how much overall do you think the U.S. had to avert really the crisis? Across three different major periods of Greek governance, um, with the PASOK government, with New Democracy under Samaras, and, and now uh, with Syriza, there has been a very, very strong engagement with Washington as Greece worked through these issues throughout this period. The United States has clearly recognized that we have a, we have a stake in Greece's success, that we need to work with the Greek government to encourage reform, um, work with American business uh, to continue to to grow the trade and investment relationship, which is the engine, which will um, make the Greek economy sustainable. I'm convinced, I've seen enough in my first year in Greece, that the country can succeed in that environment. I mean, one of the great untold success stories here is what's happening in terms of the startup culture. And I'm very, very proud of what the embassy has done um, with projects like South by Southwest, what we've done with Code Girls, what we've done to support entrepreneurship. It's a very innovative culture. The job of government is to create space for those innovators to succeed. It's a very different model from what Greece experienced in the 1970s or the 1980s, for instance. No, there was a change in the administration in Washington. I um, noticed. How much uh, has this really impacted the approach that the U.S. is taking with Greece and the crisis? Transitions are a natural part of our democracy, but the fact is there is strong bipartisan support in the United States, Republicans and Democrats, for our alliance, for what we're doing in, in Greece. Um, I'm helped by the fact that you have a politically active Greek-American diaspora, which, again, is very careful to, uh, to work both sides of the aisle. Um, and so there really hasn't been a lot of change in terms of the specifics of, of the, the alliance, the work that we do together. Mm -hmm. um, as new personnel come into position, I'm sure we'll see some changes. Uh, I'm sure we'll see some new areas of emphasis. But as a practical matter, um, there's a great deal of continuity right now in terms of the bilateral relationship. It's worth remembering. Uh, it was a strong signal from the Trump administration that one of the first um, European foreign ministers to be invited by Secretary Tillerson to come to Washington was Foreign Minister Kotsias. The individual personal relationships matter a great deal. You know, can somebody pick up the phone when there is a difficult moment? Um, is there an ability to speak frankly as friends, as allies? And so developing those kind of partnerships is, is really important. The bottom line American interest is to see Greece, uh, a strategically important country in a challenging region, pillar of stability uh, for the United States, to see Greece moving forward. How much power uh, a diplomat has to really shape the policies of a country? For example, you as ambassador to Greece, while there is a change in the administration, how much you can really affect? A, a, lot, less, a lot less power than some people imagine, I'll tell you that. That's I've done this in different places, and I've always said, yeah. being a professional diplomat, it's a relay race. You take the baton from somebody else, you run as hard as you can, and um, you hope you don't drop it when you hand it off to the next person in the relay. We have a, a large embassy, given the size of Greece, with a strong interagency contingent. 
Uh, I have colleagues from the FBI, from the Department of Homeland Security, from the Drug Enforcement Agency. This reflects the breadth of our engagement at an official level. There is a strong shared sense um, among our embassy team that we've arrived at a really hopeful moment in terms of Greece-U.S. relations. The, the relationship has rarely been as promising as it is today. But it's important for us as Americans to understand the concerns that the Greek people have, that the Greek government has. Um, and we're at a moment where um, we're able to talk to each other more honestly, more directly than we've been able to do for many, many years. I would like your assessment on how safe you think Greece is today. I, I think the lesson of recent terrorist events across Europe is that unfortunately, um, there are groups in the world who mean, mean to do us harm and who seek to exploit the openness of our democratic societies. Greece is not immune by any means. The same vulnerabilities that some of your European neighbors have grappled with are more acute here because Greece is, as it has been for centuries, Europe's back door. This is the bastion. This is, this is where the challenges are most immediate. So that means two things. One, it means that we need to have the strongest possible relationship between our law enforcement and intelligence authorities so that we're sharing information, we're measuring threats, we're countering conspiracies. And I can't talk a lot about the details, but I can, oh, tell, you, I can tell you that we have an excellent relationship at that level. I, I discuss these issues constantly with especially Minister Toskas and with our partners in the Hellenic National Police, other parts of the Greek government. But, and I want to emphasize this as well, Greece is a safe country. It's a wonderful place for Americans to visit. So we also had a big investment coming to Greece from the U.S. with Action Group and Ethniki Asphalistiki that uh, was bought by... Um, by Kalamos. And what other investments uh, you can talk to us about that are coming maybe or are, are in the way? Yeah, so Kalamos is a big success story. We were very glad to see that moving ahead. And I've been encouraged both by the implementation of that deal for Ethniki Insurance but also what I'm hearing from Calamos and from other investment groups about additional opportunities that they see emerging. Um, a couple of other examples, I was in Syros recently um, in support of two American companies that are looking at the purchase of the shipyard there. It's a strategically important asset that we would like to see remain in the hands of, of investors from a NATO country. Lots of interest in the, uh, in the tourism sectors. The potentials here are really limitless, but it's going to be up to the government to create the enabling environment. I've had some very important conversations with the government and with Caesars Entertainment Group about the um, Hellenic Cohn project, which we hope very much will move ahead. It's really a transformative project because of its size and scope. There's a lot of headroom. It depends on the government sending the right signals. Do you ever worry about other foreign investments coming to Greece and maybe too much power uh, being in the hands of specific other countries, for example, the Chinese? So let me tell you where I am on this. I mean, the important thing is transparency. I worry less about the passport than the character of the investors. You know, are these well-known companies that are operating in an above-board fashion. You know, when I talk to um, my Greek business colleagues, you know, people see the Costco investment in Piraeus, for instance, which you alluded to, as being a success. Um, you know, when I talk to American companies, our American investors believe in competition. You know, it's a core economic principle for the United States. So, for instance, um, I was in, um, when I was in Alexandrupoli yesterday, I had the opportunity to visit the port there, which is on the privatization list for Taiped. I'd love to see an American investor um, take over the operations of that port. But, you know, if there's an honest competition and it ends up being a French company or a German company or a, uh, you know, even a Chinese company, that's okay. Um, what I worry about is when there's no transparency. I worry when you have a case where there is a strategic asset like a port which falls into the hands of a company where nobody's quite sure who it is. Greece has legitimate national security concerns, um, uh, especially about strategic assets. The one 
thing that I always say about American investors is, you know when you have an American investor, you know what you're getting. Um, America has the highest standards of the world in the world in terms of anti-corruption. So if you have an American business partner, for instance, let's say John Calamos. You know, Calamos Investments, Calamos is not going to pay bribes because they are bound by the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act. They're not going to play games in terms of their bookkeeping because they have to meet the standards of U.S. regulatory officials. That's the benefit of working with the Americans. There are some other countries that have invested in Greece recently that don't meet those high standards. So, Ambassador, you've been uh, working a lot to promote Northern Greece. Yeah, well, we've got our consulate up there, um, which is our, our flagpole. Um, but it became clear to me um, soon after my arrival here that we needed to work harder on our engagement with Northern Greece. It's easy to sit here in Athens and think that you're seeing the whole country. Um, but the fact is you've got a major cultural and economic pole in Thessaloniki. It's got some of Greece's greatest universities. It has two very strong American-affiliated institutions, Anatolia College and the American Farm School. There's a lot of concern that I hear when I travel in, in the northern Greece region that somehow the United States has disengaged. Um, there's obviously been a lot of Russian investment, a lot of Russian activity. So um, I've been working so that there are clear alternatives, so that um, people in northern Greece understand that the United States is going to remain engaged in that strategic region. Northern Greece is especially important because of how it connects Greece to the Balkans. One of the areas where Greece and the United States agree strongly is we both believe that the countries of the Western Balkans should move, continue to move towards Euro-Atlantic institutions should become members of the European Union, should have the option to become members of NATO. I was in Alexandrupoli yesterday with a particular focus on the energy issues. I don't think many people in Athens understand the scope, the ambition, the strategic impact of what Greece is doing with the Trans-Adriatic Pipeline. It's an awesome project. I mean, that, that word, if there's ever, you know, a project that fits that word, it's, yeah. it's the TAP Pipeline. It's huge. Um, billions of dollars of investment and it's going to have a, a transformative impact in terms of the energy picture in Central and Eastern Europe. You know, one of my final questions that I want to ask you is about the anti-American sentiment that there has been living in Greece. I've heard about that. Yes. I don't worry too much about some of this rhetoric. It, it reminds me, when I was in India, one of my friends in government, a member of parliament at the time, wrote an essay about this. The title was Yankee Go Home But Take Me With You. The fact is I'm the lucky guy who gets to be in Greece at a moment when we have a very strong positive relationship. You know, Our job at the embassy is to continue to develop those opportunities uh, to deal with some of the the legacy of the past and we also benefit from the fact that you have two major political leaders in Greece at this moment. Both Prime Minister Tsipras and um, New Democracy had Mr. Mitsotakis, who both know America well and never are going to engage in anti-Americanism as a, as a political strategy because it doesn't work anymore. I talked earlier about things I've learned over 28 plus years as an American diplomat. A positive attitude is a force, force multiplier. So, you know, I'm going to remain focused in a positive way on what we can do together and the extraordinary opportunities for our alliance for both of our countries. And I know that's the perspective that the Greek Prime Minister shares. Um, and I'm also very confident that President Trump and his administration share that view as well.